This is me. Behind me is a 12 meter tall dike, and right behind it is the Randstad, a network of cities that makes up the economic heart of the Netherlands. In a country at constant risk of flooding, the Dutch flood defenses are an engineering marvel. They're the product of centuries of experience in dealing with floods, but they're part of a system that's coming under a lot of stress. It's a story about the Netherlands' plan to engineer its victory against its eternal foe, water. So how do the Netherlands prepare? First, we have to understand how the Netherlands ended up in such a tricky situation. And for that, we need to talk about geography. If you peel away the pretty cities, canals, and water defenses, the Netherlands is a low-level swamp at the mouth of the Rhine and Maas River Delta. This terrible geography means the Netherlands is vulnerable from both storm surges coming from the sea, but also from the fluctuations of its rivers. Just these two things explain the largest threats to the Netherlands. If we take this list of massive floods that the Netherlands has faced, most of them have come from the sea and the large rivers. This is actually reflected in the Dutch language, which has three words for flooding. Overstromingen for floods from the sea, hoogwater for rivers, and water overlast for floods caused by heavy rainfall. But in a lot of ways, the Dutch made their own flooding problem worse. The Netherlands has been created on a delta, which, which is there where rivers roam freely to go into the sea and they put them in between two dikes. Constraining that river and all the water, that kind of land managers, of course, uh, increases the flood risk. As the Dutch settled the Netherlands by draining out land to make it fit for agriculture and cities, it made the land subside, leading to an endless cycle of pumping and higher flood defenses, which turned into the national myth of the fight against water. As they straightened out rivers, built canals and dikes, they sped up water flow and increased the water level, actually increasing flooding risk. Regardless, the flat fertile land they created made for great building and farming, such that today, 60% of the Dutch live in land under sea level. The Randstad, the megalopolis encompassing most of the Netherlands' largest cities, including Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Den Haag and Utrecht, is almost entirely on reclaimed land under sea level. But before we move on to the rest of the video, first a word from this video sponsor, Masterworks. In the current age of turmoil, with climate change, rising costs and energy crisis, one of people's main challenges is protecting their investment portfolio. Take Global Equity, the cornerstone of most investment portfolios. They've lost $36 trillion in the last nine months, and now 90% of CEOs are predicting a recession next year. Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley are investing billions of dollars into real, tangible assets. Not just precious metals or real estate, but also fine art. As a real asset, the value of art is less likely to be affected by the factors I mentioned earlier. While the average retail investor's portfolio, made up mostly of stocks and bonds, is down 44% so far, Masterworks' latest sale netted it a 21.5% return. In fact, that's the sixth out of their last seven exits with a net return of over 20%. And so far, 550,000 people have signed up to the waiting list. But Into Europe subscribers can skip the wait with the link in the description. If that sounds like something for you, check the link down below for more information. Now, back to the video. To live in the worst land possible, the Dutch have developed several tools over the past centuries. The most obvious element is the infrastructure they've built. In 1953, following massive flooding, Work started on the Delta Works, a marvel of engineering which protected most of the Dutch coast from the North Sea. The Netherlands effectively created a water fortress against the sea, limiting its access to heavily controlled places. Following massive floods on the rivers in 1993 and 1995, it adopted room for the river as a philosophy for its river management. This meant increasing the distance between dikes to reduce flooding. But all of the Netherlands' existing problems are being made worse by climate change. First, there's sea level rise, which according to the IPCC, could be anywhere between 26 to 82 centimeters at the end of the century. So far, this is mostly due to changes in ocean circulation, which is leading to more water in the North Sea, but it's made worse from the melting of the ice caps. This single sheet of ice in Antarctica, five times the size of the Netherlands, could contribute to 0.6 meters of sea level rise. This threatens not only the Dutch coastline, but the entire Dutch freshwater system, as a higher sea level would lead to salt water flowing in from the sea into the Netherlands. And this sea level rise is being compounded by extreme weather events. The study into storm surges on the North Sea coastline found that the right conditions could see water rise by roughly 50 centimeters. But extreme weather is also having an impact deeper inland, like in 2021, where extreme rainfall nearly overwhelmed Dutch flood defenses on the mass. So, of course the Netherlands has a plan for this, its national adaptation strategy. It's in the process of renewing its water defense infrastructure to reflect higher sea level and new design philosophy. So the Netherlands is already creating a permeable fortress by reinforcing its coastal defenses. And following room for the river, the Dutch are also pursuing a dike enlargement program along the main Dutch rivers. 
All of this can work up until sea level rises of one meter. But this baseline scenario, what the Netherlands is doing, still has a lot of uncertainty. While Dutch dikes are built with a 50 year time frame in mind, sea level rise could take a turn for the worse requiring the Netherlands to adopt more radical solutions. The next scenario would be to create an impenetrable fortress surrounding the Netherlands, closing off the Netherlands entirely from the sea and reinforcing dikes. This would involve damming and pumping out the entire volume of the Rhine, roughly 3,000 cubic meters per second out into the sea, more than an Olympic swimming pool every second. On top of the massive amounts of energy needed for this, it would result in large-scale environmental damage. If that's not enough, the Netherlands could build a massive seawall to reinforce its coastline. It would mean pushing back the sea even further and creating new polders into the sea, similar to Mausflag 2, an extension to the port of Rotterdam. This is by far the most expensive scenario, which would require land reclamation 110 times larger than Mausflag 2, which itself costs 2.8 billion euros, putting the total cost in the area of 400 billion euros, more than the Netherlands' entire GDP, for land reclamation alone. But these three scenarios take time and money and would take decades to implement. As a last resort, the Dutch have one more scenario if sea level rise speeds up dramatically, simply because the Dutch wouldn't have time to build these additional pieces of infrastructure. And that scenario is migration inland, which would see them abandoning much of the Randstad. The Dutch would focus on preserving the main cities in the region and abandon the rest. Amsterdam and Rotterdam and perhaps Utrecht and Den Haag would be turned into islands, Millions of people would have to migrate deeper inland to Hoog Nederland, the parts of the country above water level. This would lead to massive social movement and possibly widespread discontent. But all of this needs to happen very quickly in an uncertain context. The Dutch meteorological models used to design infrastructure are hugely dependent on CO2 emissions. In the most extreme scenarios, however unlikely, sea water could rise by up to 1.2 meters by 2100. On top of this, the Netherlands is just running out of space. It's a tiny country of almost 20 million people with dikes and flood infrastructure taking up room that the Netherlands doesn't have. Roughly all of the land in the country is used either for agriculture, roads, or cities. Raising a dike means enlarging its base significantly, anywhere between seven to 18 meters for every meter of additional height. And these dikes happen to be in some of the most densely populated parts of the Netherlands. This means resolving conflicts of interest between housing developments, farmers, and water management to tackle the problem. One of the things in the Netherlands I wanted to show is this place, Nukerk on IJssel, which happens to be in one of the deepest parts of the Netherlands, in the middle of the Randstad. This is a construction site, showing that despite all the risk, the Netherlands plans on holding on to the land they fought so hard to win from the sea. But it also means that for a culture that is so focused on risk and planning, that they aren't hedging their bets. This was Interrupt, thanks for watching. As per usual, the sources are in the description down below. And while you're there, feel free to check out the link to my Patreon if you'd like to support this channel and help me make more videos.